Good evening, everyone from, from Geneva. This is uh, Anya from the Edges Secretariat. I'm just testing my audio because I believe we have one or two more minutes before the official start. So if somebody could quickly confirm in the chat that you can hear me, it would be much appreciated. And thank you. Yes. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Can thank you. you. Yes, Jangata, we can hear you. Uh, we usually wait two minutes for the latecomers to come in, so let's just wait uh, two more minutes. Okay, great. Uh, one more minute to see if the participant count goes up. Oh, it is going up, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can make it to 45. So while we're waiting for the counts to go uh, to go up, I'll just say very briefly that uh, from the IGF Secretariat, we follow the traditional code of conduct, uh, as well as the fact that this meeting has been recorded. The recording will be published on the website unless anyone would object from the participants. So please do, the, do let us know if you object that the recording is published. Thank you. Okay, it's two minutes past. I think we should start and we've got 50, which is a great number. It's great to see that we've got uh, a lot of people here. Anyway, um, I hope everybody can hear me properly. Uh, good evening from Geneva. As you can see in the background, I've got the Palais in the evening. Um, so welcome to the Youth Engagement Seminar. And, um, and as I said, I'm very pleased to see you in, in these numbers. And for the IGF, uh, meaningful engagement of the youth is one of our priorities, as you know and um, early investment in those that will be our leaders and experts is an investment in a safer future. And I have to say that from experience, it is always refreshing to hear about innovative ideas from young people because great ideas come from young people and you don't have to just wait for the old people like me or um, others for for ideas because um, the young people are our future of course and um, I look forward to hearing your ideas. Uh, this webinar is one of the forms of the public consultations with the youth at the IGF and we would like to hear your views on on the internet governance challenges and opportunities that you may need. So we want to hear from you what you need, what you feel that your needs are. And um, this will help us shape the IGF uh, 2020. Um, many opportunities for the youth are planned. Um, we heard a very strong message in Berlin in the IGF 2019 um, at the last session in the open mic session that the youth really wants want to get involved. So. Uh, we, we took that to heart and also Poland, uh, the government of Poland, whom um, we're co-hosting this with, also took that to heart and we've got plans for this year and also uh, for next year. And we hope to continue with these plans um, for every other year that we have the IGF. <laughs> And um, I also hope that many of you will be able to join us for the IGF uh, meeting that is going to take place in November. And it's the 
main theme is internet for human resilience and solidarity. And we have as the four main themes, we have data inclusion, environment, trust, and also our little catchphrase is virtually together. So I hope that um, after these webinars, you will, of course, attend um, the IGF. We've got a lot of youth activities, as um, I've said. And also, we hope that you stay right until the end. Even we have a high level um, leaders track as well. And even though the name is high level leaders, we still expect to hear the youth voice. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. And with that, uh, let me just um, finish there. I was just here to say a few words and hand it over to Anya. Thank you very much, Anya. Well, thank you very much, Chengetai, uh, for these encouraging and motivating words at the very beginning. For all the participants that have joined us and are seems continuing to, to be joining us because the count of participants is growing, which is excellent. You've just heard from the head of the IGF Secretariat, Mr. Chenetai Musango. He is uh, also endorsing and strongly supporting various efforts invested specifically this year in uh, meaningfully and effectively engaging young people in internet governance through the IGF 2020 and 2021 framework. Uh, the IGF Secretariat is a very small office. We have a lot of things to do with the only three or four of us, depending, uh, depending on the time of the year. But uh, the good thing is that we are very confident that this year we will manage to meet our objectives in terms of meaningfully engaging young people in internet governance and hopefully creating opportunities for many of young people outside in the world, but also enriching the, uh, the IGF and the IG ecosystem with, uh, with new voices, new ideas, and new expertise. Uh, because we are collaborating with a couple of global, very strong, well-experienced well processes on uh, youth engagement and capacity development. Uh, some of them you see, I believe, uh, on, the, on the slide, well, some names for some you see on the slide that I'm sharing now through the screen with you. Uh, but uh, first of all, um, we are very fortunate to have a very good cooperation and support and dedication to make significant changes and progress in terms of the youth engagement this year and next year with the uh, next year's host country, which is the government of Poland. And hopefully many of you we will meet in person next year in Katowice. Uh, in addition, we work with, uh, with an excellent academic research institution. We, uh, we get to know much better this year, but we were very much aware through the Polish National IGF of it, which is called NASC. As you know, this whole work this year, as Cengetai said, is really building on, on an excellent work that's been done last year by the host country uh, of the IGF 2020, the German government. and. Uh, specifically by uh, a few colleagues involved in organizing the Youth Summit and various lead up uh, activities uh, to, to that important event that you know was, uh, was really well received by, by many, not just by young people. Uh, so the, the Youth Internet Governance Forum, we work also with the uh, YCIG, the Youth Coalition in Internet Governance that you will he hear from uh, in, the, in the coming minutes. The Internet Society, ISOC, I believe, doesn't need any introduction. You will hear of, of some specific important uh, projects that ISOC is running and uh, could be life-changing for some of you. I'm sure that some of the colleagues uh, that I, I know for a fact and I see among the participants can testify to, to that. And finally, we are very fortunate to work also with the Youth IGF movement, uh, which is, I'm sure, also known to to many of you as an, an, as an important initiative building capacity of, uh, of you with youth and on youth engagement in internet governance. So uh, let me just tell you quickly uh, what is in front of us in the next uh, less than 90 minutes, I believe. A lot of things. So uh, let's just go briefly through the agenda uh, to, to just to understand the overview and the structure of the chat that we will have later. 
uh, before before I just go quickly with you through these six agenda items you probably see on your screen, let me just tell you that um, our goal really uh, of all of us that, that worked in preparing this webinar, in preparing various concepts that we are going to discuss today with you uh, for possible implementation uh, at the IGF 2020 and then beyond, uh, really calls for an interactive dialogue with all of you. And we do encourage you to uh, post into the chat ask for the floor by raising hand in, uh, in, the, um, in the Zoom uh, participants uh, display that you can, you can see in, in your screen and, and speak up because the uh, internet governance challenges and issues and conditions are very different across countries, which means that we have different experiences uh, and different ideas and only if we put them all together, we can come up with a good creative plan. And that's what we expect from you. So don't expect that we will be speaking a lot. We will really try to be concise to the point, present facts, uh, and uh, then brainstorm with you to see what best fits your needs. So with that, let me quickly tell you what is the concrete agenda. And then uh, I'm going to tell you that today we're going to have a couple of speakers. So uh, I won't be speaking um, at all after this, uh, I believe, at least not a lot. Uh, and um, so the first, the first item that we are going to uh, go through is basically an overview of the IGF 2020 Youth Focused Activities. As you know, the 15th annual IGF is coming, uh, is approaching us very, um, very fast. So we're going to see what's there uh, for the for young people. Um, then we're going to move on discussing the survey results. Uh, I want to thank so many of you that participated in the, those open consultations through the survey and. Uh, advised us what should be the, what are the priorities, who do you want to meet at the IGF and so on. After that, while you're digesting the survey results, we're going to move to much broader world than just the IGF itself. So we're moving to the internet governance ecosystem and we're going to hear from many of the initiatives that I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago that we are cooperating with in uh, order to create a good strong framework for young people for this year's uh, IGF and next year's. Then uh, after we hear and after we engage with these processes, we are going to uh, look at the topics uh, that young people have set as, uh, as priorities through the survey and see how we are going to focus on, uh, on, um, on these issues and on the, on the requests that you posted through the survey uh, in the framework of the 15th annual IGF meeting in November. We're going to tell you what's happening next uh, as I said, the activities are going to uh, continue after the IGF. I think this, I, this year's IGF is really just the beginning. And then uh, in between all these items, we're going to have interactive uh, questions and answers, or you can take the floor just to share your comments or suggestions. If there are no questions on the agenda or additions, then uh, I believe we can consider the agenda as adopted. And uh, move very, very quickly uh, to an overview of what are those youth focused activities that uh, we are planning for the IG of 2020 annual meeting and beyond. Uh, as you know, some of you I can recognize in the participants list uh, did attend and also very actively the very first outreach webinar we did uh, earlier this year. While we still believed that the IGF uh, could happen as a face-to-face -face meeting. Since then, uh, things have dramatically changed, as you know, that's why we took this much time to organize this second webinar. But in general, uh, the concept and the idea stayed the same. As you know, we promised the newsletter and the first edition of the newsletter on dedicated to young people was issued just a few days ago. There is a dedicated mailing list that has over 200 subscribers and it's becoming more and more vibrant and many thanks to so many of you that is using that list as a communication channel to connect with young people from different parts of the world. The social media uh, will be also our important tool for outreach uh, on what young people are doing and uh, what the IGF can do for young people, as well as uh, colleagues we are cooperating with from the IG ecosystem. And of course, uh, through all these tools, hopefully we are going to 
create good friendships, good partnerships uh, through uh, cooperation and, uh, and, and create long-term maybe some projects that could, be, uh, that could be important for some parts of the world. So that's all, going, this is all going to continue until October and, and, and uh, just beyond the October. So as I said, uh, through 2021. Uh, until the end of the October, uh, we have planned to uh, issue a publication that's going to capture, capture good practices on youth engagement in internet governance. It's going to focus not just on the recognized youth IGFs uh, that probably as concept are very close to you, but also beyond. So it's going to capture the practices that we see could be of use and could be an opportunity for young people uh, around the world in and, and are existing and credible in internet governance ecosystem. So on this, we are going to call for the inputs uh, very soon after this webinar in this week. And then finally, from 2nd to 17th of November, as Chengata said at the beginning, the IGF 2020 will take place. So two weeks of a very intensive discussions is uh, expecting us. The Youth Summit is planned for 5th of November, and we're going to come later to speak more detail about this. In addition, our plan is to create a couple of networking opportunities on substantive subject matters that uh, you, through the survey and now through this webinar, will tell us that those are of your interest. So for instance, if you want to meet someone from a particular stakeholder group or a company or uh, any kind of institution, we will do our best to create that opportunity. Or if you would like to have an opportunity to speak with experts from a particular subject area, then uh, we, uh, we are going to do our best to create that opportunity. Uh, in addition, and this will be the very first time that we are doing systematically this effort, beyond just dedicated sessions and networking opportunities for young people at the age of 2020, we are going to create opportunities for you to engage with all the session organizers at the IGF that are of your interest. So let me come later to this uh, particularly, but I think this is an important, um, important engagement opportunity for you. And I think uh, you just need to be strategic and wise in, in using it for your own benefit. And finally, as I said, uh, our colleagues from the Polish government are attending this webinar. They are here. We're working in the background, uh, basically on daily basis uh, on planning the youth activities this year and next year. So uh, next year, you can expect much more. We are hoping that the situation with the ongoing pandemic will uh, calm down and that we will be able to meet in person. And in a lead up to that in-person IGF, annual meeting, there will be several opportunities, uh, very interesting and very creative that uh, also the Polish government will, will support and implement. So with that, uh, let's go to probably the most interesting part, at least from my very subjective, subjective point of uh, view. The survey that you responded to um, in, a, in, a time, in a time framework over three weeks gave us uh, such good material, material to work on and to build on. As you know, the survey was uh, basically focusing on the key outputs and outcomes of the excellent work that the German government and German stakeholders involved in the Youth Summit 20, uh, 2019, so last year, at the last year's IGF did, and basically it verified to see whether young people still see those, uh, those outcomes as relevant or they would like to introduce some changes. And uh, change is good. It uh, keeps us um, awake and then brings certain dynamics. So I, I, I can't say that there are changes and there are new trends. And I'm very fortunate uh, and very pleased to welcome my colleagues from the Polish Youth IGF that I met uh, this year and worked a lot with them. Those are young people that are going to be basically your hosts next year, Emilia Zalewska and Rafał Prabutski from the, uh, from the Polish Youth IGF that are going to help us all to walk us through the results of this survey. So without further ado, I'm giving floor to uh, Emilia and to Rafał to, uh, to walk us through the survey results. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Rafał. I'm from Poland, from uh, Polish uh, Youth IGF. Uh, today I'm with my uh, colleague uh, Mia Zaleska. Uh, we are the steering committee uh, of our board. Uh, we have a lot of members. It is in disciplinary 
uh, people, this community, what we build. And today we are going to show you the results of a survey. So, uh, Emilia, could you, uh, could you be so kind and present the results? Mm, sure, thank you, Rafael. Uh, so, yes, uh, we would like to start with uh, briefly uh, reporting to you uh, some stats about the survey. Uh, so here uh, you can see some demographical stats about the survey. Uh, as you can see, the most answers uh, came from Africa, almost 42%. Uh, the second biggest group was Asia Pacific and with only 4% less, uh, Latin America and Caribbean group and also Western Europe and others group. And the smallest number of answers came from Eastern Europe with only 6%. Uh, the gender stats, uh, as you can see, are quite balanced. Um, there were 58% uh, of answers from males and 40 from uh, females and two, uh, who, uh, two as other. Uh, and I think uh, which uh, can be mm, the most uh, relevant, uh, one of the most relevant uh, stats for us is uh, the age range. Uh, the most people uh, who answered the survey were between 25 and 30 years old. And the second biggest group were people uh, aged between 20 and uh, 25 years old. Uh, the smallest group were people under 20, but also there were some interests of people between 30 and 35 years old. Uh, the most uh, respondents came from civil society, uh, stakeholders group, uh, if you could move to another slide, uh, which also connects with the fact that almost 72 percent uh, of people who answered the survey submitted responses in their own personal capacity. As you can see, uh, here you have uh, the countries, the list of the countries with the largest numbers of responses. And uh, it comes along with the previous slide that the most of answers came from Africa and from uh, Asia. And uh, here we've got the essence of the survey, the topics uh, which were appointed uh, with the highest priority for young people. Uh, each participant could uh, mark up to four topics uh, that they find the most important. And uh, here you can see that the highest pr uh, priority uh, was given to the access and digital inclusion topic with over half of the responses. Then to digital education, uh, youth participation in multi-stakeholder, uh, digital processes and to data protection. Mm, but almost all the topics uh, that were mentioned in the survey uh, got almost 10% of uh, voices, so it shows that all of them are quite relevant to some groups of people. Um, if you could move to another slide, thank you. And uh, here we've got uh, answers to the second question. Uh, which uh, fields uh, young people find the most uh, interesting to meet experts? And uh, here we've got uh, quite similar results. Uh, the number one uh, priority is uh, given to access and digital inclusion, also to uh, capacity development for youth and how to get involved, uh, freedom of expression online and influence, data protection uh, and cyber security. Mm. So uh, summing it up, uh, as we could say that uh, quite similar to the previous years, uh, we've got some, we can uh, see that there are four main fields of interest, access and digital inclusion, digital education, uh, youth participation and data protection. 
Thank, thank you very much, Amelia. I, I'm sure colleagues will uh, agree that it was very interesting. I, I've seen a couple of co very good comments in the chat uh, related to the survey, but also some comments uh, related to the previous section. So I'll try to also uh, address those as much as I can because I'm here multitasking. Uh, while I'm doing that, uh, I'm sure that last year, all of you that were at least to a certain extent involved in the IGF 2019 and aware of what's happening with the uh, efforts on in youth engagement uh, led by the German host, probably know for the name of uh, Miss Elizabeth Schauerman. So I'm going to give floor to Elizabeth now that luckily is with us to tell us now listening to the results that Amelia has presented how does she see that the priority, whether there is a shift in the priorities and also to advise us on, uh, on good, good lessons learned from last year and uh, what could be maybe improved for this year. So Elizabeth, thank you for joining us and you have the floor. Thank you very much, Anja. I'm very grateful to uh, be able to talk to you. And um, as was mentioned, can you see me? Is it? Yes, All right. yes, All right. can. okay, you wonderful. So, um, so, as has been mentioned last year, we really looked into uh, how we could bring youth participation to the, to the IGF and this is a wonderful opportunity this year that we can together kind of go further in that process and not see these results that you just heard as something that you know, is a standalone, but that kind of builds on years of, um, of what has been done, not only by us, but by a lot of different uh, stakeholders. So as uh, Emilia has pointed out, and I have also looked into the four most requested uh, topics, which are access and inclusion. I believe that this is mostly pertaining to the inclusion and the access of young people. Um, then we, we are talking about digital education, also a topic that is very close to young people and also that young people can speak on with uh, you know, authority because it, it directly concerns them. The same goes for youth participation, uh, which is you know, inherently something that has to be youth driven and uh, data protection, I, I assume this year is also high up on the agenda maybe due to the, uh, to the pandemic and things we have seen. So this is all very relevant to the experience of young people. And um, it, has, it is so that um, all of these topics from one angle or another, people from last year have um, worked on in the summit. So uh, I've linked here the, the report. I will also post the, the direct links in the chat later. Um, what we have been doing last year is that we gathered over 100 young people from our world regions in an online process um, before the IGF, several months even, and gathered their inputs. And we saw that there was a lot of interest in, in digital human rights and platforms, freedom of expression, but also these four topics. And what we did uh, in the online consultations that we had kind of an exchange between uh, people with a certain interest in the topic and sometimes also external um, experts, people who work very specifically on the topics that were discussed. And we were gathering the inputs of, of young people. So during the webinars, but also after, there was an opportunity to, to leave statements and, uh, and given like also maybe different regional um, perspectives on, on a certain topic. Um, when we then got, got together in Berlin, uh, the day before the IGF started, um, there was a kind of collaborative prioritizing of themes. So we listed kind of physically all the, all the statements that we got uh, in a room and then people could go through and, and give points to the things that they found most important or most interesting or most pressing. And then uh, subgroups formed on, on those priority themes that were decided on by the young people who were there. And these subgroups then got together over a couple of hours and drafted uh, messages, recommendations, short pieces of input um, with different, you know, different target groups and also maybe different, um, different 
um, levels of abstraction, but we left it really free. It was up to the groups that to themselves to decide who they wanted to address and, and what level kind of. Um, and then each group presented their, their outcome and we got a kind of a rough consensus of all the people that were there. Um, those of you who are, have been in internet governance spaces might be quite familiar with the, uh, with the concept of rough consensus. Um, so what I see here is really an opportunity with all the work that goes into youth participation this year uh, to take the next steps and kind of build on what has already been done. And uh, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, wonderful, thank you. I just listed um, as, an, as an example four of the messages that directly go back to the four topics that were talked about. So for example, uh, on data protection, there was a group that worked on, um, on uh, data transparency, mostly from the like targeting or speaking to uh, private companies, businesses who are dealing with data. So this could be an, an aspect to further explore. Maybe the different aspects are uh, on the front line this year. On the topic of digital education, it was found that a certain framework of ethical principles and standards should be developed. Um, then it was stated that in, the, in terms of uh, youth participation, there are various barriers and those barriers need to be overcome or at least, you know, addressed by all stakeholders in the internet governance space. Um, and, oh, I see it's the same, there's twice the same thing, I'm very sorry. <laughs> and then um, um, on the topic of digital inclusion and access, uh, we had an, uh, a message on uh, net neutrality and universal access and how that is important to, um, you know, fully, uh, participate in an online environment and also offline. So um, you can see here some of these statements are a bit rough, There's, they're sometimes not super catchy. I think with a little thought that goes into how we can work on this, um, we can really develop them further and take them as a basis. But um, as, I, as I said, you know, I'm very happy to see that so much work goes into this whole um, this whole topic this year and um, with that I would like to end my input. Um, Emilia was also a participant last year as were many people who are in this call now. So uh, Emilia if you would uh, like to share like maybe one or two insights on the process or what you as like our, our future host take from this um, I would be very grateful. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. And I'm also very happy to see a lot of familiar names here. Uh, the one thing I can say about our last year's summit is that, um, you know, uh, talking about internet governance on the national level is something totally different than talking uh, with people from different countries, different sides of the world and different backgrounds. And uh, the last year's experience was very inspiring. And I think uh, we all had uh, a chance to really broaden our perspective uh, on the same kind of problems because there's a lot of issues that uh, the perspective on, on them is uh, very different in different parts of the world. And seeing how somebody from another region, another group of countries uh, sees that uh, can be very um, open, uh, eye-opening. So uh, I think that uh, the last year messages that we created uh, were the result of the opportunity that we had due to Elizabeth and to a German uh, government to meet uh, with people from over 100 countries and to uh, share our experiences, our views, and to learn from each other. Yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. a great experience and I hope that this year, even due to uh, quite different conditions, there will be an opportunity to do something like this again. Emilia, thank you very much. Elizabeth, thank you very much. I think we're doing quite well with time. I want to 
especially thank uh, our so far um, speakers that took the floor for that. And I think we can dedicate a few minutes to questions and answers. I've seen a couple of interesting questions and comments in the chat. While I'm going through them, uh, can I, I believe Yulia asked for the floor and I'm gonna give floor to Yulia and in the meantime, try to identify from where the noise is coming. Please keep yourself muted if you're not taking the floor. Yulia, you have the floor. And I'll try yes. to. Thank you, Anya. Um, good, uh, good day, good evening to everybody. Um, yes, I'm without video because probably it will uh, uh, it will not go through um, in all countries. So I'm, I'm just saying without. So good evening. Thank you, Anya, um, for giving the floor. Um, so my name is Yulia from uh, the Youth IGF movement, this uh, orange logo that you saw at the on the first uh, page. And I just wanted to add something um, to what Elizabeth said, because actually last year we uh, were been uh, present at this summit as well. And I believe the a group of, uh, of young people that Elizabeth was working with uh, also um, attended the open forum uh, that we organized at, um, uh, together with the ICANN and the European Parliament. So it was a great one. I just wanted to actually add two priority lines and Elizabeth already like kind of started to underline this. Uh, the first one, uh, uh, what you said on digital education and we would try to actually come with the digital skills. It's a high, um, um, high on, the, on the agenda of different corporations as well as organizations today, uh, the topic of digital skills. And I believe it will be very interesting um, to, uh, you know, to work this and insert um, the discussion on this. And the second one, it will be on cybersecurity. We do have the line cybersecurity is one of the priorities which came from this, um, uh, you know, from this uh, survey. So we would try to call cybersecurity and cybersecurity skills. It's also one of the priorities that came, for example, from the uh, global summit, um, youth summit on cybersecurity. It wasn't us organizing this, but I believe a few organizations present here uh, the globals ones were present on the summit. It's one of the topics that came from, and uh, can be can be interesting to you know kind of uh, focus on this as well. So, two, two points. Thank you, Annie. Yes, thank you very much, Julia. Indeed, very important points, and I think uh, you actually responded to an extent to a couple of comments that came into chat into the chat in terms of uh, why certain topics related to cybersecurity in the context of elections are not among these topics as, as well as data in a, in a context of human rights. So just to, just to uh, underline that this survey was indeed building on the uh, outputs of the IGF 2019-11 messages that the youth set as a priority, but it also offered uh, the basically free text option for, for everyone to indicate some other interests which were not listed in the dropdown. Uh, list of possible possible responses. And on that, we didn't receive a lot of responses. Nevertheless, data and cybersecurity are highly positioned and uh, we will create, uh, as I said, a number of uh, opportunities for further deepening the knowledge and experience on these topics, as well as to network with stakeholders working in this area. Uh, if there are no other comments on this particular uh, item, I'm going to ask you to um, digest a little bit this survey because we are now moving to uh, another very interesting uh, area of, uh, of this webinar, agenda item of this webinar, which relates to uh, getting familiar with the other internet governance processes of youth, youth priority. I think this is very important for everyone that uh, see themselves in the future professionally or semi-professionally involved in internet governance or those that would like to continue their education or gain some new skills related to internet governance because uh, the initiatives and the processes that we are about to hear from uh, are working basically on the field for years on uh, on bringing various opportunities to uh, to people in all parts of the of the world so with that one of the interesting concepts that emerged a few years ago are the so-called schools on internet governance there are a number of them, and we are going to speak to some uh, in, the, in the coming weeks, uh, whether it's gonna be through our mailing list or it's going to be on the third webinar. 
there will be a networking opportunities to meet some of the organizers of the virtual of the sorry of the schools on internet governance including the virtual school internet governance that emerged this year but uh, for the start uh, I, I'm giving the floor to Juan uh, Velasquez, our colleague from the Youth School on Internet Governance, to say a few words about the processes that they are running. Juan, if you're with us, you have the floor. Uh, thank you for giving me the floor, Miss Angela. Uh, I, I'm going to share my screen right now. Uh, yes, but just I'll stop sharing. Okay, can you share now, Juan? No, I can't. Okay, now you should be able. Yes. Perfect. Well, uh, in the Internet Society Youth SIF, that's what are the, uh, the group that I belong, that I'm working with them the last two years. So uh, we want to engage more youth, more youth in, the, in the Internet governance related issues. What is the Youth SIF? The Youth SIF is an organization formed mostly by young people, and we have around 202 2,000 registered members from a CTA nationality all over the world. We want to increase the participation of young people in the discussion spaces on internet global or internet governance at global level. Formally, we established in 2015, mainly uh, at the beginning in Latin America, but after rec being recognized as by Internet Society as a special interest group in 2016. We went through a, a strong internal, internationalization plan in October 2018. What we want in the youth, youth special interest group, we want to include young people in internet governance ecosystem, create an open space for young people to develop projects and give visibility to young people and their work. During these last years, this last year we will be doing that. We, we was doing that, uh, especially with the publication of Boo Analysis of Connected Youth. This was published in 2017 with the support of Beyond the Net, another, organ or another partner organization. And um, this was a uh, a, a series of articles written by young people from different countries in Latin America. Then the last year, we launched the Youth Atlas to give visibility to young people that are already part of the internet, so internet governance ecosystem. We collected around 160 testimonials of young people all around the world to understand the views of the internet governance ecosystem. And we had this, uh, the Grading Network Competition. The Grading Network Competition was made in 2019. I was part of, of the competition. And consists in a map of the current initiative organization that involves young people in ICT. We go over one 150 organizations all over the world, map in, in the creating networks, and 10 projects developed entirely by young people. And one of those projects uh, got a fellowship to, to attend the IGF 2090 in Berlin. This year, we are facing different challenge because we had to change everything in the March because of the, the pandemic. And uh, we know that we have to get more engagement and high moral. We know also that we have to face language barriers at, and accessibility because we have people from all over the world. And most of them uh, say they don't speak English, some of them. So we want to include more languages as, as we can 
to share our communication. Uh, funding in a pandemic context, this, this was, uh, this is a topic that we discuss a lot and reaching to the un unconnected youth. Uh, thanks to the pandemic, we had to change our project to lower budget or even no budget. We, so we had to adapt to the circumstances. Focusing on online initiatives that are fast to develop and fast to spread and, and safer considering, the, considering the, the situation actually. And a publication samples in test or a bigger public publication that we did in the past, we are emph emphasizing a project combining a blog and a newsletter that contain new relevant news and job or academic opportunities for, for, for young people. And we've seen that the UIDF is probably getting bigger because it's going to be online and it's heavily on online publicity. And we are finally, we are planning an open book event that addresses the role of you around the world during this COVID-19 pandemic. We want, we, we want with this open book is to have all the expertise that young people gain with this special content of the pandemic it, it, in case the willing again something like this we know what to do. So that will be everything that we are trying, we are working right now in the UC. Uh, we always welcome everyone from everywhere to be part of the UC. And you can find us in, in our site, in Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on communications through all emails. Thank you very much for this time. Well, thank you very much, uh, Juan. Very interesting. Thank you for sticking with the time as well. Uh, I am asking, you presented a lot in a very short time, so I'm assuming that colleagues may have a lot of questions for you, but I'm going to kindly ask all the participants to uh, put the questions in the chat box, and then later we can come to uh, Juan with those concrete questions, or maybe you can in the meantime engage with, with some of the participants in the chat. But just in the interest of time, I would advise that we move forward. So we've heard from a very important project uh, that Juan uh, presented. Uh, just, a, just a clarification at the beginning. So uh, for this webinar, we don't have representatives from the uh, schools on internet governance, but we are saving those for the next webinar, which will be later in October. So with that clarification, I would like to move to uh, another important capacity development uh, initiative that, the, that exists within the IGF's framework recognized by the IGF Secretariat. It's called the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, the only dynamic coalition uh, focused on youth. Uh, we will come later to the concept of the dynamic coalition uh, in the IGF's framework. But nobody better than um, Aileen will explain the concept of the YCIG and how to be engaged. So Aileen, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Ms. Anya, I'm going to share my screen. Let me see if it's working. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I'm really happy to be here with you uh, sharing this morning, afternoon, evening, depending on your time zone. So I'm going to speak today about the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, and a little bit about uh, the DCs and the best practice forums. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm going to share with you that there are two major ways to get involved in IGF intersectional work, uh, which is uh, through the DCs and the BPS. The thing is that most of the time, Young people only participate at the IGF, well, the main um, event, um, the annual event, or it could be at the local NRIs or regional. Um, but the thing is, uh, young people also need to be more involved in the IGF intersectional work. Um, I'm going to share with you two of these major ways to get involved. The first one of them is the best practice forums that offers sustainable ways for the IGF community to produce, produce more concrete outcomes. 
these outcomes uh, come in the form of compilations of good practices and are intended to help inform policy debates and serve as inputs into other pertinent forums and processes. Currently, we have four best practice forms. The first one is cybersecurity, the second one is gender and access, the third one is data and new technologies in an internet context, and the fourth one is local content. Um, I'm going to share with you later the links uh, so you can check on your own and pick um, the ones that you are more interested in. In addition of this part of the intersectional work, we have uh, dynamic coalitions which are open multi-stakeholder groups dedicated to an, an internet governance issue or the set of, of issues. I'm happy to say this is um, some re revelation. The last time I checked, it was 18 dynamic coalitions. I think that was in July. And now I'm happy to see that we have more. That means that there are more issues that uh, people, not only youth, find that it's really important to address. That's why I'm really inviting you to join both the best practice forums and the dynamic coalitions. Now I'm going to speak about the youth coalition on intergovernance. Um, this dynamic coalition was established to advocate for the voice of children, young people, and young professionals in the internet governance fora and processes, especially at the annual internet governance forum. And it is uh, the natural space for youth interested in intergovernance related issues. And we see that the IGF is a platform for engaging uh, with all the stakeholders. So young people can have uh, a place at the table and have equally footing to amplify our voices. It has been successful in securing a commitment from the IGF to include young panelists at annual meetings, as well as organizing a series of panels at different levels of engagement and producing clear statements during the IGF closing plenary sessions. As a registered IGF Dynamic Coalition, we have a meeting slot at each forum to discuss the different issues that young people is um, concerned about. So for example, this year, uh, we are actually having um, a session where I'm going to share with you later the link so you can register. I hope you are already registered at the IGF uh, website. And we are also having uh, participation at the main DC session. Um, so about what we do, because um, most of the time uh, we see there is a confusion that people think we are an organization, but we are a dynamic coalition. That means that uh, we, we don't have like a, a structure of an organization in the terms of, of board or different levels of um, the team. In the case of the YHC, we have a steering committee uh, who um, works and coordinates the different um, positions um, at the regional levels. Um, so as I mentioned before, as a registered dynamic coalition, we participate actively in the IGF processes and we represent youth from around the world at the intersectional work at the IGF. We also provide capacity building tools for newcomers at the IGF. One example of this is the IGF ABC for newies, which I'm going to ask, explain to you in a minute. Um, so other thing that we do is that we share opportunities, fellowships and events, uh, mostly at our mailing list, but we have also Facebook, Instagram and, and Twitter. And we are happy to say that we have 10 years of experience in intergovernance um, where we have um, helped to strengthen the youth position in IT. Um, so as I mentioned before about the steering committee, actually uh, the idea is that the composition of the steering committee represents the five regional groups, which has been established beforehand by the UN. In our case, we only have four representatives 
we have uh, from the Eastern European group, uh, myself from the Latin America and the Caribbean region. We have representative from the Asia Pacific region and from the African region. About the composition, I also would like to say that after the IGF, there is going to be a process of election. So I hope you can join the mailing list to become a member and participate of the set process. Um, finally, I'm not, not going to take you uh, much more time uh, for my presentation. I'm happy to share with you that uh, we are going to work on an, an updated uh, version of this ABC for newbies. This is a guide uh, on your first step into the IGF. Uh, so in this guide, you, you can see the explanation of what is the IGF, the intersectional work, how to participate, um, things like that. And we are going to work on this updated version with Youth Seek and also with Youth for IG. And that's all from my side. I'm going to share um, the social media channels so you can join us. We have website, mailing list, as I mentioned, and uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you very much. Elaine, thank you very much. Very comprehensive presentation. We've, uh, I'm sure, learned a lot. I also encourage uh, participants to follow the YCIG on social media to join the mailing list. And especially now when the elections are coming, I do encourage you to take active participation during the election period. It's uh, very interesting. It's, uh, it's also a good opportunity to learn how the open bottom-up transparent process uh, within the IGF works also in this context. And uh, finally, in a response to one of the questions from one of our participants, uh, where did, did we draw the line in terms of how do we define the youth? Um, as you know, within the UN, there are different de definitions of uh, how youth is defined. Usually it goes up to 24 years old, but we actually follow the YCIG as a very experienced network, as Eileen said, with over 10 years and more experience in multi-stakeholder open uh, consultations with young people and set the path to up to 35 years old. Uh, and um, so I hope I hope that responds to, to a couple of questions received in the chat. Oh, with that, uh, I'm sure that many of you also know that thanks to the Internet Society and their uh, concept and program of ambassadors, many managed to come to many of the IGF annual meetings in person equipped with necessary knowledge and skills. I'm glad that that process and that project is ongoing. And Alejandra today is with us to tell us more about it and plans for this and next year. Alejandra, you have the floor. Thank you, Anya. Um, you can just run the presentation. Yes, I think it's there. So hello, everyone. Uh, I know that I know almost all of you or a lot of you, but if not, I'm Alejandra Prieto at the Internet Society and working on all the activities that we are doing to kind of like promote this youth engagement that we are trying to do all around the world. So it's really a pleasure, a pleasure to be here with you. So the first thing I wanted to talk about, it's something that I guess it's kind of like known by almost all of you. It's our uh, IGF Youth Ambassador Program. So in the program, actually this version of the program that it's been uh, the IGF Youth Ambassador Program, it was kind of like a combined uh, program that we started last year, but uh, we have been for uh, more than five years working on activities with you and trying to engage youth in the internet uh, governance world, and also uh, 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 actually sending people to the ITFs. So I would like to kind of like uh, highlight here that uh, I will be talking about three different initiatives that we have to ideas. And each of them will uh, uh, touch actually many of the priorities that you highlighted, but uh, one more than others. So in this case, it's of course, youth participation at uh, the IGF. So uh, a little bit of this program, it's that um, it's actually for young people that are kind of like a talented and uh, identified uh, uh, a need and uh, like an, uh, an opportunity for them to be at, uh, as part of uh, the, the, the youth that are uh, the internet governance forum because as we all know sometimes it's not as 
we would like there are not enough youth representation there. So that's why we want to highlight that and increase the youth participation in internet governance in general and uh, mainly in the internet governance forum. So the program is kind of like uh, kind of like the money, I guess. So it's just the, the first part that it's a selection. It has three different phases. It's applications. Then they have to, 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 to be um, the, those that are selected from the first phase, they will move to a second phase that it will be the online training. So for a month, they will be trained on internet governance. There is a course that uh, we uh, developed uh, at the Internet Society that it's on internet governance. So here is also a component on capacity building because we all know that capacity building is really important for them to feel empowered once they are talking uh, in the internet governance, uh, in the internet governance forum itself. So that component is really important for, for their capacity to be uh, built and increased so they can have like, like the security that, that and, and, and the self-confidence that they can talk about it. The third phase of the selection process is actually writing papers. So the, um, th those that are, that are completed the, the two first phases will write a paper on different uh, internet uh, government issues. And this is good material for them to kind of like then work a little bit more once they are selected and try to define what they want to do as a project and kind of like have an impact at the end because we don't want these, pe these young people to be just there for six months. That is the more or less the duration of this program. We want them to be uh, involved in the internet governance ecosystem and have a real impact. I'm saying this because this is possible. I don't know if you know this, but uh, the youth, uh, the youth sick that it was presented just before by, by Juan was actually uh, created uh, thanks to this program. They were young people who were at that moment, they were called idea, uh, youth at IDF fellows who actually created uh, this uh, uh, youth sick organization that is now doing amazing things around the world. The Youth Coalition of Internet Governance it's, it's, it's something that is also to highlight because the, the ladies you saw before, uh, some of them were also part of this program. So they got all the information they needed or the network they needed and the skills to finally go back home and get involved and have impact uh, through the internet, uh, uh, through the Youth Coalition of Internet Governance. I also wanted to highlight that this year we have many foreigners and sponsors that are there for us to kind of like have more impact and, and improve the, this uh, empowerment that we want to do to, to youth. And um, even if it's everything, it's online, it's kind of like <laughs> kind of like church. And the idea of youth ambassadors that are here in this call can confirm that they are being kind of like attending almost two or three webinars per week because these partners that I'm presenting here are doing an amazing work trying to kind of like make them feel that even if it's online, they can be involved and they can have an impact because they can get the information and the training that they need and then just go to the IGF online this year, maybe in physical uh, IGF in the following years and have a, a real uh, um, impact there. Also, I have to say that I am really, really, really grateful and I have to thank uh, the internet, uh, the, the, IG, IG, the, IG, the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance because it's the first time that we are doing a mentorship uh, component of phase in this program and they are being amazing partners. Uh, so thanks again, ladies, for that uh, great support that you are doing and I hope this uh, mentorship, it's just not, it will be the first You're of welcome. many. Yeah, thank you. It will be the first of many that uh, we can actually have later and um, this mentorship program will not stop right after the idea they will maybe continue so the guy the, the the youth will feel that they are um really mentored and uh, supported by by the group of course all of them are welcome to join the youth seek uh the the group that uh, was introduced by juan before and with that it's just keep moving and keep doing amazing things in the world and raising your voice because your voices can be heard and they have to be heard in you know, all the internet uh, world. So that's the first thing I want to share. The others I will be uh, shorter. So if you can meet, please, Anya, move to the next. So what I wanted to highlight that uh, some examples of what uh, young people around the world can do and what, uh, what we are doing at the Internet Society. So highlighting the, the priority here, access and inclusion, I wanted to share that uh, 
one of our the projects that we are running at the Internet Society is called Community Networks. And what we are doing here is building community networks together with a lot of people, including youth champions. So there is actually one of the IGF Youth Ambassadors uh, that it, it, it actually created, actually built a community network. So I just wanted to say if you are uh, interested in something like that to build a community network to kind of like help us increase the access rate of, to the internet, let me know so we can put you together with some experts, give you some resources so we finally get the access we need be all online and of course be represented as we deserve as youth in all the fora that we are having around the world and the last person the last thing i wanted to share is something that we just published here thanks again to the yeah, internet society youth seek and it will relate to data protection cyber security all those priorities that are being highlighted uh, for i guess several times already uh, so is that uh, we actually work uh, with um, with uh, youth uh, with youth to create a, a fact sheet that explains a little bit uh, why encryption is important. So I will welcome you uh, to check that uh, uh, that uh, the link that uh, Lily has just <laughs> shared uh, in the chat. Thank you very much. You are quick. <laughs> so this is really a fact sheet with uh, three different uh, actions for you to do. Um, please help us promote this because if everyone does this, the data protection will be better, the cyber security will be better, and we all feel safer online. That it's at the end the goal of almost all of us when we are online. So I think with this I can finish. I, I know that we had only three minutes, and I hope I have I have covered those. Anyway, I'm here for you. Any question you have, any comments, whatever it is. Uh, please let me know. Just one thing to, to share with you is that uh, it, this is not here because it's not official yet, but uh, in 2021, we are launching a new youth fellowship program that will be really comprehensive and long fellowship, long, long fellowship program with a lot of partners, sponsors, etc. So I will count on all of you to be involved in this and help me uh, get that program uh, to a higher level. So we can actually uh, increase and grow this pool of young, talented people that are represented finally in, in the internet governance ecosystem and world. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Alejandra, for um, a lot of information shared. So I hope that the colleagues will uh, be free to approach you, maybe even after this webinar, if they have more questions. And uh, for sure, during this webinar, please be free to ask questions in the chat or raise your hand and we'll give you the floor to ask questions to Alejandra. And Alejandra just posted her email address so you can also write to her directly. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said, uh, we're going to have a very good uh, cooperation already this year with the next year's IGF host country. And uh, uh, there is a project that's very interesting called the Game Gem implemented by the Polish government this year as well in the framework of the IGF 2020. Kinga with us, uh, Pasternak from the uh, Polish side that is going to walk us through what is the GovTech. Uh, hi everyone, uh, greetings from Poland. I'm really happy to be here and to uh, say a few words about the Game Jam. Uh, together with GovTech, um, uh, that's the department of the uh, Prime Minister's uh, Chancellery uh, uh, in Poland, together with the uh, Ministry of Digital Affairs. For the IGF, we created uh, uh, the GovTech Festival. Uh, as you can see, it's powered by IGF 2021. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to invite you all to um, participate and to be a part of the Game Jam. We are in the Game Jam is the opening for the GovTech Festival, and the Game Jam is uh, um, is the event that we want to uh, invite you to, uh, to participate. I don't know uh, if anyone heard of uh, any hackathon. Uh, so basically the hackathon is a marathon of 48 or 24. This time will be, it will have uh, 48, uh, this time 
48 hours of, uh, I'm sorry for the presentation mix. Uh, this time we'll have the 48 hours to create the most entertaining game. Uh, we'll start at 6th November. Uh, well, uh, we have the um, we have the most incredible, but we don't know yet what what is the name of the category. So we want to welcome you and we want to invite you to uh, to participate in uh, the game jam. Uh, we will uh, come with uh, all of the information. Uh, we're still launching the English uh, uh, website for the. Gof uh, for the Gothic Festival and for the Game Jam. Uh, so if anyone of you is interesting, interested in uh, programming and uh, game developing, we want to invite you. Uh, we uh, want to invite uh, not the professionals, but you know, the youth and all of uh, those who want to try and who want to, um, who want to try how to, uh, develop the most entertaining game. Um, for now we have the date uh, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, to say that we're coming with some more information just just a little bit just a little bit we have uh, we will have the best prizes I, I promise that so hopefully for the next webinar I can uh, tell you more about it um so basically i don't know if i used all, all of my three minutes but um i want to invite you all to to see the govtech uh, festival.com site you know in a days it will be in english so hopefully you will find some information and hopefully you will participate and compete with uh, others uh, on the international level creating uh, the most entertaining game. Kinga, thank you, thank you very much. I believe you've awaken up interest in so many of us that we really are eagerly waiting for the 14th of October. That's the third webinar that we're going to host at noon UTC. I think it will be much more convenient for the Asia and Pacific communities. And hopefully Kinga will have a more concrete uh, information to tell us. Now you really triggered our curiosity, so it's going to be difficult to make it up to the October, but thank you very much. Uh, very interesting and uh, for sure you're enriching the IGF 2020 uh, process. So with that, if uh, do you have any questions for Kinga or any of our speakers that we've heard of uh, from so far? I do see a couple of uh, good observations in the chat, uh, such for example is from Jean Pedro saying that um, yes indeed it's a positive news that the opportunities for young people are growing. Now we are faced with two challenges, how to avoid silos and working on the same thing topic by different initiatives and how to make youth to stay involved in the long run rather than one short participation. So indeed, and we are, believe me, very much aware of this internally. So what we are trying to do is create some maybe modest in terms of the technicalities, but I hope it's going to be useful database of these processes so that we all know where we are standing. And then hopefully, uh, thanks to the host countries, uh, and as you know, the IGF has ensured its future in that, in that sense as well for the next at least um, three years. So we're going to have the host countries on board. So everything that we're doing this year is just going to uh, hopefully produce good results and we're going to build on those results in the coming years. So uh, hopefully that will create a long term engagement of young people. But of course, the interest um, and motivation is uh, individually on all of us. Uh, that's why I think it's important that we work together. I believe uh, Julia from the IGF movement would like to take the floor now to say a few words about the movement. Yes, thank you, Anya. Um, good, uh, good, uh, good evening, good morning um, once again. And good day. Um, so I'm from the Youth IGF movement. And I feel like we need to make a presentation next time as well on what are the Youth IGF movement and how to be involved and what are the um, you know, strategic developments. So I hope and I count on, uh, on the IGF secretariat for this opportunity um, you know, 
that could be probably given to us next time. So to make a, you know, a, a more clear presentation on how to work together and how we work with others as well. Um, another point I wanted to, um, to underline that uh, we will be having, well, it will be a couple of uh, youth activities present at the IGF, obviously you have the timeline, but there are also like on-site activities and um, we, uh, we will be having the open forum that we once again organize with the European Parliament, so with the members of the European Parliament. And the idea actually of this open forum is to allow the young people, not only the young people from Europe, obviously, but from all over the world to meet the leaders and to you know have the uh, direct uh, direct interaction and i believe actually it's why uh, a lot of you are here today present at this call is to have actually your say and to bring your voice to the people who take decisions and i think this is a great opportunity so you're all welcome uh, you can send us uh, private messages uh, that we can read or um, give to the uh, members of the European Parliament to underline and to discuss during the open forum. Uh, but obviously you are invited to be present as well, well, present remotely. But obviously we will, uh, you know, underline and repeat this again and again, but I just wanted to bring this uh, once again and for the first time here uh, this evening, at least evening for me. So thank you, Anya, for, for this meeting given to me. Thank you very much, uh, Yulia, for this. And I also encourage colleagues to join the uh, the open forum you're organizing with the with the European Parliament. It's I think you're muted. Oh, here it's working again. Sorry. <laughs> Does it work now? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Sorry. I hope you you heard at least the first part I said. But I thank Yulia for a very useful set of information. Uh, so with that, I think we have maybe fifteen minutes to finish a very important uh, two agenda items we still are pending. So I won't be focusing a lot on the concept of best practice forums and the dynamic coalition. Eileen did mention that briefly. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that four best practice forums are active this year and they are operating in an open, open consultative process. They have calls uh, twice a month, the open mailing list focused on gender and access, cybersecurity, data and new technologies, and local content. And we do encourage you to explore the IGF website and to join these networks. It's an excellent opportunity to learn more about these topics, but I think what's even probably more important for those of you that see themselves as contributors to this area or would like to build themselves and improve professionally, uh, it's an excellent opportunity to really meet um, the names in, this in the field. So. Uh, people that hold expertise um, and that could create further opportunities for, for you, depending on your interest. PPFs are, are very similar to the Dynamic Coalition. Celine explained the concept of one and basically every, every Dynamic Coalition, regardless of whichever uh, topic it's focused on, functions in the same way. Completely open, transparent and inclusive and uh, multi-stakeholder bottom up and they're just waiting for, for you basically to send an email to ask how you can be part of it. For the concept of the national regional, uh, sub-regional new IGFs, many of you here are coming from those uh, so-called the NRI's communities. Those are technically the IGFs organized around the world. Um, the processes are completely open. If there isn't a national IGF in your country, I'm sure that there is a regional IGF or sub-regional IGF that you can join. The best and uh, the shortest way I think uh, on, uh, on connecting you with the coordinators is if you send a quick email to me and uh, or my colleagues at the Secretariat and then uh, we will be happy to connect you to the organizers and we'll share the email addresses later. So sorry, I'm rushing through these uh, items because we have um, around 12 minutes to finish an important agenda item, uh, especially on the next steps and uh, how, how you can prepare for the IGF 2020 and what, what's the homework we have in order to create opportunities for you. So very briefly, uh, I'm going to remind us uh, what were the results of the survey that the uh, uh, over 120 young people responded to uh, prioritizing, as you know, the topics that you can see on the screen. So for us, that is the navigator. And we uh, plan to focus, first of all, the youth summit, the two hours long interactive open dialogue between young people from all parts of the world on uh, some of the priorities that you can see among these topics. So we still need to understand 
the format of the youth summit and this is a good opportunity for you to advise us how what do you think it's useful but uh, please stay um, stay subscribed to the youth um, IGF mailing list I'm going to email you later after this webinar once again just to make sure that you are subscribed we are going to continue our consultations over the mailing list to understand how to plan the youth summit uh, and uh, what could be the core focus out of these topics of, of the summit. In addition to the youth summit, as I said at the beginning, there will be a couple of networking opportunities. So we want to organize primarily the uh, opportunities for you to engage with experts from the, from the matters that you marked as your priority. The way we are going to do that is a twofold. The first one is we're going to organize up to five networking opportunities with some of the most prominent names uh, in the field of internet governance, uh, particularly the, the uh, subject areas you marked as your priorities. So that's one side. And then uh, another part would, part would be that we are going to connect you to the session organizers of the sessions focused on the subject matters you marked as your priorities. We are going to do that through the co co four core thematic tracks Jenget I mentioned at the very beginning. Um, the way we see it through our analysis, the inclusion seems to be your top one priority um, with these sub issues that you can see on the screen, followed by trust and after that by data. However, we are going to follow these sub issues for sure. And so by the, by the 14th of October, when the third webinar will be hosted, you are going to be, you're going to receive a full schedule of these sessions. Who are you going to meet? When? How? Um, logistics on, you know, how are we going to prepare all this? Because we do expect uh, quite a large number of participants in a very limited uh, time so we'll, so you'll see about the methodology on, on on how to prepare and I think it's it's also very important that you do preparations on your on your side. However, one has, one uh, important I think item that we wanted to highlight, which we see as um, as extremely important to focus on, as you know, you didn't mark basically any or some of you just or just very few marked that your priority interests are within the environmental thematic track. And as you know, environment became a dedicated thematic track, which means a dedicated priority for the IGF only this year. For us, the way we see it, we don't see it as a lack of interest at all. We see it as an um, alarming area where we need to raise awareness. And that's why if you agree, we would also dedicate special efforts to create opportunities for you to engage with the stakeholders that are the whole expertise on the field of intersection of environment and dig digitalization or digital technologies and policies. So uh, with that, so that would be our special contribution to, um, to the results of this survey that showed to us that we really need to raise awareness on what are those hot topics in the environment field and uh, how you can be involved. So we're We'll try to bring it closer in a very simplistic, but then methodological way to all of you. And uh, by 14th of October, the plan on this will be also communicated. Uh, so just quickly, when we connect you to the session organizers, so all these workshops, open forums, dynamic coalition sessions, NRI sessions, pre-events, uh, main sessions on the topics of your interest, uh, the, the further, form of collaboration between you and the session organizers will be primarily between you and session organizers. So we will be uh, basically a connecting point. But the way we see how that the collaboration could develop is that young people could be recognized either as resource persons because you are coming with an incredible potential of, uh, of ideas, of inputs coming, bringing from your own countries, cities, regions, and so on. Uh, and even if you're coming as, as we would say in a, in a legal field tabula rasa, meaning you are coming as uh, persons that maybe don't have enough knowledge or experience on the topic, that's probably even more important than if you do, because you're going to ask right questions. And that's where we see that you are an extremely important resource for, for the session organizers. And it could be that somewhere the, um, 
uh, you are going to be recognized as speakers. So uh, on this on this plan, we're going to communicate by the third webinar, but just that you are aware of the of the dynamics that are happening and a lot of communication coordination happening in the background for on this particular uh, process. Uh, yes, save the date, please, for the Youth Summit. The Youth Summit will uh, aim methodologically, first of all, to bring and elevate some of the most important uh, substantive priorities for young people, but primarily will aim also to give visibility to all of you. I'm going to ask my colleague Anna from the Polish government here to, to come in because we are, the Youth Summit seems to uh, be receiving more and more, more um, I would say, political support. So it's not just from the side of the, uh, of, of the UN, of the organizers, though we see that uh, youth is very important, but as I said at the beginning, the next year's host country sees it as very important. And maybe I'll just give a quickly floor here to Anna to underline that, that support that the Polish government plans to give to, to the Youth Summit, but also to the next year's activities. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anya. Um, uh, I will be very brief uh, since we have five minutes left only. Uh, I'm very, very pleased to, uh, uh, to see uh, so much uh, spirit in today's present, uh, present, uh, presentation, uh, innovative approach, uh, enthusiasm. And uh, as Changet, I said at the beginning that uh, we talk to the heart in Berlin that uh, the uh, uh, young people in the IGF, their IGF voice uh, is crucial. Uh, in the whole IGF debate. Uh, for us, it is very important. Uh, we put uh, a lot of uh, stress of uh, involving uh, young people uh, in the de debate. That's why even more we are happy to, uh, to be with you at the uh, YAF IGF Summit uh, during the uh, virtual uh, IGF 2020. Uh, and uh, since uh, last year, my minister was very impressed by, uh, by you guys, uh, your involvement. And uh, for us, uh, it is priority, one of the priorities uh, to, uh, to involve young people uh, even more uh, in, the, in the debate. Uh, I would like to uh, confirm that um, our minister will be present at the uh, Young uh, YAF, uh, Summit. So prepare yourself with the questions. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he will be uh, very happy uh, to answer and, 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 and start the dialogue and discussion with you. Uh, for, for the plans uh, for the uh, IGF 2021, uh, Anya, maybe I will leave it to our October uh, webinar. Uh, so uh, then we can speak uh, about uh, the details. Uh, but once yes. again, uh, once again, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Anna. Yes, I completely agree. That's actually the the purpose of the third webinar as well to look beyond the IGF 2020 and kind of to keep our network to stay together. Anna, thank you so much for this announcement as well. This is this is officially, and I think it's very good because. Uh, the high level political uh, presence at the Youth Summit will bring naturally more visibility to the session. I hope that that will not stop there and that by the November, by 5th of November, when our session is scheduled, this participation will rise even more and the interest of senior stakeholders to listen to you and hear from you and engage in dialogue will, uh, will just grow. We promise to work on that as well uh, in the coming weeks. With that, um, I'm going to ask, so since we have, a, according to the schedule time, maybe around five minutes to finish, I'm going to ask for uh, maybe 10 more minutes of your time, because I think we're uh, also having a, a very important um, agenda item coming to us. It's important primarily for all of you, uh, because regardless what we prepare for you from the experience, and I'm sure you would agree with me, um, the the, pre the preparatory work done on individual basis by the, uh, by the participants is critical if you want to really benefit to a maximum from, from the opportunities that are given and presented to you. That's why it's important to have a good methodology. And I'm very happy that this year, uh, this is a, actually very timely, a very good tool uh, to apply on this methodology that I mentioned has been issued by the Internet Society and Katie is with us uh, this evening. She is going to present us for the first time 
to, to all of us, uh, I have to say I'm also the first, uh, the, it's the first time that I'm listening about it, the toolkit on how you can um, assess a particular policy issue. And as you know, in internet governance context, that's extremely important because uh, there are so many aspects that are involved in one particular policy issue. So I'm giving floor now to Katie to walk us through that toolkit. And we can, of course, continue to discuss it on our third webinar. Katie, you have the floor, and I believe you are going to share your own presentation. Yes, thank you so much. And let's see here. I'm going to share my screen now. And I'll just double check. Can you all see that? Yes, we can. OK, great. Just so you guys know, when I have this up, I lose Zoom. That's a my computer issue, so I apologize if you are saying something in the chat. Feel free to just jump in and say hand or something like that, and I'm happy to take a, a break. Um, I know we're running up on time, so I really appreciate you staying for just a couple extra minutes. I will go as quickly as I can while still being thorough. So to start off, uh, my name is Katie Jordan. I'm a senior policy advisor at the Internet Society, and this year I'm our project lead for what we call the Internet Way of Networking Project. And so we know at the Internet Society and in this, this group as a you know, collection of people working on internet governance that the internet is essentially a network of networks. But we sat out at the beginning of this year to answer the question, so what? Why do we care about this you know, big network of network? What makes it successful? How has it evolved and how can it continue to evolve? And without you know, the sort of degradation of some of those principles, we wanted to take a look at what is the actual foundation of the, the infrastructure and of the internet itself that makes it so successful. And that's what we call the internet way of networking. Because we know that the internet owes its success not only to the technology that makes it up, but to that really specific way that it operates and is able to evolve all over the world. This is what makes networks go from, you know, a community network in the hills of Tushetti, Georgia, to a part of the global internet that we all use and that we can, um, you know, communicate over and share ideas and knowledge and things like that. But we have to remember that the internet is not it doesn't have any borders. It's not like a country. It's this global thing that connects us all. And so when it's under threat from any one place, the opportunities and benefits it offers everywhere else are also threatened. So what we did was we set out to both define what those critical properties are, what the foundations of the infrastructure look like, but then also to create a toolkit so that it's not only the technologists and people who are super deep in the weeds who can identify if there's something that threatens them, but that everybody can identify if something threatens them. And so our goal was to sort of not only define these things in a technical way, but to make that accessible to everyone. The Internet Society's mission, as you all may be aware of, is you know, to ensure that the Internet is open and globally connected and secure and trustworthy. But to be a true champion of the Internet, we needed to understand the underlying principles that create that foundation first. And so by creating the Internet way of networking, we're hoping to create a tool that will both help us to analyze regulatory proposals, but also technology developments, and then to watch as the evolution of the Internet changes over time and to see, okay, if something starting right now is, you know, for example, a policy on ban of TikTok and WeChat in the United States, is that a one-off thing or is that a part of a larger trend all over the world towards regulation of the internet? And it also creates a way of talking about these things in a way that we can all understand. So it's not just the internet society running around and doing all of its, its advocacy work and its development work, but it's this global community really rooting our, our advocacy and our sort of, you know, fight for the protection of the internet in some critical ideas. So again, that is what created this internet impact assessment toolkit, which will help policymakers, technologists, and users to analyze decisions and see if there's going to be an impact on the internet. And one way that you might want to think about this is that it's almost like an environmental impact assessment for the internet. So in the same way that in a lot of countries, if you're going to create some sort of new building complex or an apartment building, for example, you need to do an environmental impact assessment to see, will it impact the groundwater? Will it impact the wildlife or the animals that live there in a long-term way? And at the same time, we should be doing that with the internet because it is this long-term and super important thing that we all rely on. And so we need to make sure that it's protected. So, also, I can see that there's questions or there's stuff coming up in the chat, so please feel free to just flag me down. 
I'll, I'll uh, let you know, Katie, if there's something good. Awesome. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that. So this Internet Impact Assessment Toolkit is intentionally global. It should help us everywhere to figure out what's going on with the foundation of the Internet. And it includes lots of different things. It has those critical properties that make up the foundation, some examples through use cases, um, a questionnaire to help you figure out if a policy actually impacts critical properties, and then all sorts of other good stuff like infographics, promotional videos, FAQs. But this is step one for us. This is a brand new beginning and we hope that it builds and grows from there and we're gonna need your help. So to talk a little bit about what these critical properties are, what makes up this foundation and why it's so important. These are our five critical properties of the internet. These are the things that make it so unique and why it has succeeded. They're fairly kind of idealistic. Um, there may not have been a time when all of these were present in their purest form, but we have to be working towards them because the more we chip away at them, the weaker the entire foundation of the internet gets. And so one way you can think about this is sort of like you're sitting at a table. Everyone around the planet is sitting at this network of networks table. And each of these critical properties is a leg of that table. And no matter where you sit on the table, if a policymaker starts to whittle away at the bottom of one of the legs, if they're shaving it off or cutting it down, the whole table that we all sit at gets unstable. And the more you chip away at these critical properties, the more unsteady the entire table gets. And we're risking coming to a point where the table starts to tip and lean so much that we can't build anything on top of it. So it's really important that we protect the legs of the table, protect these foundational properties now, so that we can continue to build so many different innovations and new pieces of the internet on top. So I'm trying to go really quick, but as I mentioned before, this toolkit is only going to grow. We're creating use cases that are identified trends, case studies that look at specific policies, and then all sorts of additional documents to talk about, you know, how are the critical properties and how is the foundation of the internet impacted all over the world. So how to use those tools. Step one, everyone should be able to create a use case and a case study because everyone is impacted by the internet. Whether or not you have a solid network at this point or not, you are impacted by this digital economy and by this digital world. And so you have just as much role to play as anyone else in figuring out if there are things that are negatively impacting them. And then how you use those things. So let's say um, I'm from the United States and I can see that, for example, this executive order on TikTok and WeChat, I can take that proposal and I can look at the text and I can take this, this toolkit that we've created and say, okay, does this impact the general purpose nature of the internet? And I would say, yes. I can go through and ask myself a series of questions to determine whether or not something is going to negatively or positively impact the inter internet's infrastructure. And if the answer is yes, then I can work with my community or I can work with the internet society to actually talk about what I can do to advocate for better policies. And I hope that the impact means that we all have this common narrative to fight for the internet because we depend on it so much. So, and I want to talk really quickly about some of the things I heard today that are priorities for you all, um, because you can put the internet way of networking to work right now. When we look at something, for example, like access and digital inclusion, even if a new, brand new community network doesn't know it, it's relying on the critical properties of the internet's foundation in order to connect. Because that, that interconnection from one point to anywhere in the world depends on the internet working. And same with youth participation in the multi-stakeholder processes. Right now, we're all collaborating online because of COVID-19 for the most part. And all of us depend on this network and this infrastructure working all over the world so that we can work together. Um, and this, you know, the Internet Way of Networking Toolkit also really depends on multi-stakeholder support and on your support because we can't identify every new threat to the Internet ourselves. We are going to need each other and we're going to need each other's help to make sure that we are protecting this resource and advocating for better policies that impact it so that we get to benefit from this for a long time. And then on security, I would say really briefly, security broadly speaking was obviously not built into the internet. It's inherently a trustworthy system and it assumes that whoever I'm talking to has my best interest at heart, which is unfortunately not the case. But that's actually really important because if we built security into the actual way that these packets of information go from one point to another, 
that means that we would never be able to change them. They would be static. And so not having security built in means that we can continue to evolve as security gets better and better. So that's why we can do things like um, encryption, end-to-end -end encryption right now, is because that was something that was created after this infrastructure is built. And when the next important security measure comes out, we'll be able to implement that too without risking harming that underlying infrastructure. So as far as what's next, um, please check out the toolkit online. There's all sorts of different stuff there. Uh, we're gonna do a ton of webinars through the end of 2020 and then keep an eye out on the Internet Society website in 2021 for tons of different trainings and collaborations and opportunities to work with the Internet Society to create new use cases, to do more advocacy and to find partnerships all over the world. Um, so that's it for me. I know that that was super quick. I'll put my email in the chat. I don't want to keep anybody um, too long, but uh, thank you guys so much. I appreciate your time. And thank you, Katie, for, for your time and for excellent presentation. There is one question that perhaps you want to respond to from Daphne in the chat, whether the toolkit is also active on social media as that could help raise awareness on it. Yes, so the toolkit is active on social media. We've shared this on all sorts of different ISOC Twitter handles and Facebook and LinkedIn and that kind of thing. But I'd love your help spreading it even more. And I will put the link to the broader toolkit in the chat so that you're also able to share that right now. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Any more questions for Katie before we wrap up this webinar? Because we're already, I believe, almost 15 minutes over time. So if not, uh, I want to thank uh, colleagues from, from ISOC and thank you, Katie, for sharing your contact. So I'm sure that uh, you will be receiving emails after this webinar. As we have to wrap up, I firstly would like to thank you for being here for very um, interesting questions shared through the chat. I wish we heard from more of you, uh, but I'm sure that, uh, you know, we're getting to know each other. So probably at the third webinar, the, uh, the atmosphere will be more relaxing and we will know each other's dynamics. So I'm looking forward to, to it. Uh, before, before we say goodbye, uh, I think what's very important is to go through, through the next steps. So what's in front of us. Definitely internally for, for the Secretariat, for, uh, for our colleagues that, that are collaborating with us on this uh, youth engagement project. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, especially by the 14th of October, noon UTC. That's when we are hosting the third webinar and the last in this series before the IGF 2020 will take place on uh, second of, starting of 2nd of November until the 17th. In the meantime, before the IGF 2020, expect a publication that's going to capture the good practices on youth engagement and internet governance, which means expect emails from the IGF Secretariat for you to share those good practices with us. Uh, as you know, at the IGF 2020, by the third webinar, we're sending you a concrete schedule of all the activities uh, with the calendar invites, so you can mark your calendars uh, and uh, following your priorities set up uh, set up your own personal schedules. And then finally, on the third webinar, uh, the next year's IGF host country, the Polish government will tell us more about the, uh, the steps and the activities to prepare for uh, starting as early as January in 2021. So with that, I'm going to uh, kindly ask you all to turn on your cameras, if that's possible. We're trying to get a photo of all of us from a very successful webinar, which I promised in the chat I'll send to all of you. So let me just uh, make a view of all of us. Okay, so I'll just take one more. And you can do the same because there's so many participants and probably there are any of you that are more skillful than me? Okay, that should be it. So I promise I'm sending you also this and I'm emailing you this presentation and a couple of um, addresses that were shared in the, in the chat box, which could be useful for you. Before, uh, before we say officially goodbye, uh, 
any last words from anyone that they would like to come in? If not, we were going to ask Chengetai to formally say good night from Geneva to all of us. And then uh, we are starting to prepare for the third webinar on 14th of October. I don't see any- It was any. a pleasure to be here. It was yeah. really nice to meet you too. Thank you, it was a great presentation. Thank you, thank you very much. It was really a pleasure. I just wanted too. to say thanks as well. Um, it's really nice to see all these amazing projects and everything. Um, I'm really new to all of this, so it's really nice to see how much is going on. And uh, yeah, so thank you all. Yes, I, I definitely I can understand you. You know, my experience, I still can recall my early experience with the IGF. It can be very overwhelming, but uh, the good thing is that it's, it's, it's quite a large ecosystem, but a very friendly one. So I think that's why the learning process goes quite quite quick. Uh, I'm reading, thank you so much. I'm reading very kind messages in the chat and very, very good feedback. So we are continuing over the mailing list. I'll email you just to check that you are subscribed to our mailing list and we're going to see each other very soon. Uh, once again, big thank you from my side. Thank you for staying over time and uh, over to Chagatai. And Chengetai, we cannot hear you. Thank you very much, Anya. And thank you very much to you all. I think we maintained our participant list. So that shows that it was a very good and uh, exciting webinar. And please stay in touch and hope to see you during the next one and also during the virtual IGF. And also, if you ever have any ideas on how we could improve our connection with the youth, please feel free to either send me an email, send Anya an email, or just send it to the generic IGF at un.org email box. Thank you and um, good night and or have a good evening to you all. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Night. Bye bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.